Ezekiel, in chapter 7, and I'm thinking, we'll see how it goes, but I'm thinking maybe three or four messages. We'll be done with the seventh chapter, but we'll leave that in the hands of the Lord. We're ready for new section as the seventh chapter is divided up in. And that'll be verses 23 through 27. Let's read verses 23 through 27. He tells Ezekiel, make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease. And their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh. And they shall seek peace. And there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief. And rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn and the prince shall be clothed with desolation and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way and according to their deserts will I judge them and they shall know that I am the Lord. I am Jehovah. The first point in these verses is the tenth point of the seventh chapter. They shall be bound with chains just as criminals are bound. Think of our criminals. We've all seen pictures of criminals and they lead them from one place to another and they're, they're bound hand and foot in chains. They're bound. He said, make a chain. Signifies Bondage. The making of a chain was to be emblematic of them being bound and led away captives. Remember, remember Ezekiel is told to do several things in the course of our study that is to paint a portrait, to paint a picture to Israel. And Judah, what's coming? This binding with the chain, as we've already established, is emblematic of, of being bound, being led away captives. We have, uh, turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 27. Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 2. Thus saith the Lord to me, as to Jeremiah, make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck and send them to the kings of Edom and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, 
and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the uh, messengers which come to Jerusalem, unto Zedekiah, king of Judah, and command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. You see, all, all these, this binding that Jeremiah was to do and, and the placing of them on his necks and stuff was to, and, and he was to send that picture to these different lands as a picture of what he had did for Nebuchadnezzar. He had placed all these lands that he mentions here into their hand, into his hand. He had given them to be their captors. And they were captive. And just as he did Zedekiah, Jerusalem, Judah, Israel, he's given into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter 40 of Jeremiah. Chapter 40 in verse 1 it says, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord... After that, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah when he had taken him, being bound in chains among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. If you read through the book of Jeremiah, you see there were times that Jeremiah delivered the word of the Lord. He, didn't want to deliver the word of the Lord, but nonetheless he was obedient to deliver the word of the Lord because he said it was as a fire burning in him, and he had to. He had to speak the word of the Lord. But then he was put into captivity for speaking the word of the Lord of his own land, of his own people, of his own king. He was placed into captivity. And... Nebuzaradan here loosed him from that captivity. And it's unclear whether Jeremiah was ever taken to Babylon, to the Chaldees, or the Chaldees. It, the thought is that Jeremiah remained in his homeland and a prophet to his homeland. Turn with me to the book of Nahum. Now, Nahum chapter 3. Nahum 3 and verse 10. Yet was she carried away. This is concerning no, and this is a prophecy concerning Nineveh, and the city is talking about, in verse 10, is the city No, which was a city in Egypt, which was carried away captive. He said, yet she, was she carried away, she went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for their honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. <laughs> you see, that, the binding in, in Scripture is a, is a symbol of captivity. It's a symbol of a sign of servitude. And they were taken away captive. They were taken away as servants. Now, note... Oh, 
don't have all my page here. I wonder what happened. It's bond, uh, we are in bondage. The scriptures talks about it, and we'll read, we'll read some. The, the bonds cannot be broken. Man, the natural man, is in bondage. He's in bondage to sin, yes. He's in bondage to the law of God. And we can see that men everywhere are seeking to break those bonds. They're seeking to break those chains. Before we get too far into, into the, before I get too far into this, turn with me to the book of uh, Lamentations. The book of Lamentations. We already talked about Jeremiah being placed in captivity, being placed into we would call it a prison, a dungeon by his own people, by his own king. But that's not all that Jeremiah says he, he was in captive to. If you look at verse 1 of Jeremiah, the third chapter, he said, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He's talking about the, the, the wrath of God. And he said, I've seen affliction by the wrath of God. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. You see where Jeremiah is coming from? You see what Jeremiah is lamenting? Do you really? Was God's wrath poured out on Jeremiah? <laughs> no. It was poured out on Israel. It was poured out on Judah. Jeremiah was a priest of the city of Anathoth. An Anathoth was, a, was a, a city of the, a priestly city. Where priests dwelt, there was what, four of them in the land of Israel. Anathoth was one of them, and that's where Jeremiah dwelt. <laughs> and, and we know that during this time that, that the priests, mo most of the priests were defiled. They were wicked. They weren't serving the Lord. They were rebellious. <laughs> Their priests had, had, had forsaken the Lord, but that doesn't mean they all did. As is evidenced by Jeremiah. As is evidenced by Ezekiel. You see. But continue reading in verse 4. He said, My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath built it against me and encompassed me with Go and travail. He has set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. He said he was in captivity. He said he was in that he was under the chains that God had placed upon him. What is he talking about? What is he lamenting in the book of Lamentations? He's lamenting the woes, the judgment of God that came upon his people. And he, he was an eyewitness to it. He witnessed their suffering. And I can liken the picture. 
We talk about our country and we talk about the wickedness of our country and, and, and as we talked about the natural, they call the natural disasters that have happened in the country, this country the last couple of years. And as I sat and as I watched those disasters, and, and yes, I know that it's the judgment of God because of the wickedness of the people, the wickedness of the land. But as, it doesn't help when I see the suffering. I'm a human, and I see their human suffering. The fires that, that ravaged California, and there was a lot of them this year. And, and the last one was, was the, the biggest that I think they set on record. And to see the misery that those people, that they lost everything. I can, I can sympathize with them. Can you not? Can you not mourn and lament? Yeah, wicked. but you know what? Maybe not all of them. How many of them were saved folks? It matters not <laughs> that they're wicked. To see that suffering. And to think about the ones that were killed in the fires. We talk about this when we're in groups. It's got to be one of the most horrible ways to go. To be burned alive. Of course they say that in most situations, you're overcome by smoke inhalation first. But not in all cases. Some cases, the flame, you, because they talk about the yelling and the screaming of people that are being burned. So it's easy to identify with Jeremiah and his lamenting. And while those, the judgments of God was not upon him specifically, he witnessed them. And it was just as though it was upon him. It was a captive to his soul to watch and to witness that. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms in chapter 2. And if you remember this from four and a half years ago, Psalms chapter 2 and verse 2. The king of the earth. set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. <laughs> they do. They are. They're against the Lord. <laughs> Even those that, 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 that talk about they love God <laughs> But yet their ways say that they are against him. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. <laughs> you see, they, they, talk to, they talk about being in bands. Let us cast their bands asunder. Let's break them away from us. Prevalent one. What do you think evolution is? Is it not man trying to cut asunder? The bands? 
that are around him. We're going to read scripture. The law of God is written on their heart. The atheist. What's he doing? He's, he's trying to cut, cut asunder those bands. But you know what? The atheist contradicts him on his own self. Because he knows that it's wrong to commit murder. He knows that it's wrong to commit theft, robberies. They know that it's wrong to commit adultery. However, we look at them and we think, well, do they do or don't they? Well, why do they sneak around? Why do they not want to be found out? Because they know it's wrong. <laughs> There's a law that's written on their hearts and they can't break those bands. <laughs> they can't break them asunder. You see, they're trying to cut those bands asunder. They're trying to discredit the Word of God. That's why we have all the new perversions out concerning the Word of God. There's even a, a movement amongst Baptists to say... Well, KJV ain't the only one. ESV's just as good. What are we hearing about in Sunday school? He that addeth to or taketh away. <laughs> Look what God said. He that setteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> the Lord shall have them in derision. <laughs> he's, sitting, he's sitting there laughing at them. <laughs> and he's got them, he's got them busy in themselves and screaming, and they think they're doing a fine job. They think they've broken the bands. <laughs> Why, everybody believes in evolution, right? And we, we broke that band, and, and, and now we, we break the band concerning murder. Well, we don't think it's... We didn't broke the band of murder. Well, what do you think it is, killing infants? <laughs> And I didn't hear him say it with my own two ears, so I'm cautious to repeat it. But Barney Sanders, right up to just before birth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, I think they think they got one over on God, don't they? And he's laughing at them. He has them in derision. He has them wearying themselves. I know we're not to the part about the ancients, the council of the ancients, but Barney Sa Sanders is what, 77 years old, 76 years old? He's an ain't, well, not to Brother France and Brother Ron, but he's considered by many in our country an agent, ancient. He should know what he's talking about, right? But he don't. Man does not like to think about God in his natural state. And so he does all that he can do to dismiss the fact that there is a God. 
Because to acknowledge that there is a God, they have to acknowledge that there's one that they have to give an account to after this life. And they don't like to think about that. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. This is just in way of comparison. Now you and I, we're in bonds. <laughs> We have a yoke upon us. But our yoke is easy, is it not? Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Jesus said, Be yoked together with me. <laughs> Be yoked together with my kingdom. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> Brother France remembers yokes. I heard him talk about plowing with... No, I never plowed. Oh, you never plowed with him, huh? But your dad did. Possibly. Yeah. I never, I never saw it. Okay. But yoke was a piece of wood curved out on the end. Had like bows to, to receive the, the neck of the oxen or whatever was going to do the plowing, the donkeys or whatever. Now the mules and horses I saw. Yeah, and it, and it yoked them together. And, and then to that they would fasten the equipment to, is being drawn behind, but, but it gets two to working together instead of just one. Jesus said, take my yoke. Be yoked to me. Be in bondage to me. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. He said, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, up, uh, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He said, my yoke is easy, and the burden is light. Don't you find, find it easy? Easy to be a servant of the Lord? Easy to be yoked together with him? Oh, that, we're talking about the desire that's in each and every one of us that are born again now. To that it is. When we do that which, in service and when we do that in, in learning which is, is pleasing unto him, oh, it's a delight to our souls. Well, a delight is not a burden, is it? In the book of John, chapter 14, this is, this is what he said to his servants. This is what he said to those that love him. John 14 and in verse 21. He said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And he said this after he said in verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's the yoke, there's the burden. <laughs> keep my commandments. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou uh, may manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye, have heard, which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. What does it say about us that are yoked together with the Lord? <laughs> we, we do His commandments. We love to do His commandments. Why? Because we love Him. Chapter 15. In verse 10. He said, 
If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. There's the principle, the principle of love. That's what, what we're in bondage to. That's what we're in bondage to. That's what we're yoked to. The principle of the law of Jesus Christ, which is a law of love. If you love me, keep my commandments. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. <laughs> you see, it increases our joy as we, as we serve the Lord and do that which is pleasing to him. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. In 1 John chapter 5, First John chapter 5, verse 3, he said, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That is, they're not burdensome. They're a delight. It's a joy, as he said in John chapter 15. <laughs> it's a joy to do the love of Jesus, to do his commandments. Paul said this, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 21, he said, To them that are without law, talking about the Gentiles, Gentiles did not have the written law of God, they didn't have the law of Moses. He's comparing the Jews and the Gentiles, and, and the, the Jews had the written law, they had the law of Moses, but the Gentiles did not, as without law. To them that are without law, the Gentiles, as without law. In other words, he didn't burden them with the law of Moses. He didn't burden them with the ceremonials and the Moral law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. Paul said <laughs> that, he, that he wasn't disobeying the law of God. By not imposing the ceremony on the moral law, upon them which was given to the Jew at Mount Sinai and not imposing it upon them but he was imposing he was, he was under the law of Christ what is the law of Christ well we just read it in John 14 and John 15 and 1 John 5 the law of love and so Paul operating under the law of love took the gospel of Jesus Christ of, Christ, of repentance and faith through Christ to the Gentiles as well as to the Jews. And then he said that I might gain them that are without law. But now while they did not have the written law, We've already talked about this. While they did not have the written law, while they did not have the law of Moses given at Mount Sinai, they had a law that was written upon their heart. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Romans. In chapter 2.
In verse 12, Verse 11 says, For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law, without the law of Moses, given at Mount Sinai, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by those that were given the law at Mount Sinai, and they sinned in that law, that law is going to judge them. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, those without law, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Listen, <laughs> they do by nature the things that are contained in the law. It is a law unto them, and they're trying to break those bands. It's no wonder they're trying to embrace evolution. It's no wonder they're atheists. It's no wonder that, that they're trying to say it's okay to, to murder the unborn baby. You see? They're trying to get away from the law of God which is written in their hearts. Amen. And they can't do it. And the chain that Ezekiel spoke of here signified the conquering of Jerusalem. The slavery of those that were carried into captivity. And that they were all bound over to the righteous judgment of God. That judgment which was to befall them was the righteous judgment of God coming upon them. It was their just deserts. Their just due. It was recompense. It was the vengeance of God upon them. Shall we stand? Be dismissed in a word of prayer.